let's start with just Comcast. Um, I, this is this is a mix of good and bad news for Comcast shareholders, and and I suspect mostly bad news. Um, I, I think Comcast shareholders are going to be rather frustrated to see this bid this morning, because. Well, the good news is there there is some reciprocal distribution synergy, right? You you can uh, distribute NBC programming in Europe. You can distribute Sky programming in the U.S. Not entirely clear why you couldn't do that through arm's length transactions, but there is some synergy there. Um, and and the best news for Comcast is that it increases their leverage because their shareholders have been screaming about a lazy balance sheet for a long time. This in, it, because it's all cash, this would increase the leverage, and that's good news. The bad news is they're going to have to twist themselves into knots to try to explain why satellite TV distribution in Europe is not going to be just as obsolete as it already is in the U.S., and, um, and that they aren't just going down the same path that AT&T went down with DirecTV, albeit um, perhaps with some delay. Uh, but, but, you know, for all the content that Sky has, it is still a satellite TV distribution platform. It's interesting that they never even mention the word satellite in the investor presentation for this morning's conference call. It's almost as if they're trying to pretend that it's not a satellite TV platform, Craig, but it is. Craig, there's been a lot of speculation over the last several months about, A, whether Comcast would try to top the Disney bid um, for 21st Century Fox, in large part because... The view was they wanted this asset in Sky, so this is a way for them to get around that. But the second piece I was going to ask you, given what you j just said, there's been a, a, some pressure for Comcast to try to find that next acquisition, that next elephant. If not this, what then? What, what would be your well, preference? I, I it, the pressure to find that next elephant hasn't been coming from Comcast shareholders. Um, I think it's been assumed to be inside of Philadelphia and the, their desire to, to acquire something. And there's been some speculation that because most of the paths in the U.S. are blocked by antitrust, that that next acquisition would likely be overseas. Um, and there aren't a lot of distribution assets. So to some extent, this is, and let's take the analogy of AT&T for DirecTV again, it's sort of buying what you're allowed to buy rather than what you necessarily need. Um, and that's always a problematic place to start uh, an M&A process. Um, there's been some talk about that they might try to get involved in Liberty Global, um, although... Uh, would, would you prefer that? Those are cable assets <laughs> as opposed to satellite assets? Well, there you have an issue of valuation, and you also have the question of, of Vodafone, so you have another interested party there. Um, so, you know, but, but the, the pressure that you describe is entirely self-imposed by Comcast. I don't think their shareholders are saying, gee, Comcast needs to do something to get bigger. Craig, let me ask you a separate question. Assuming Comcast were to be successful, and, and we don't know that yet, and assuming regulators were to pass a trans or, or allow a transaction like this to take place in the U.K., the effectively 40 percent that 21st Century Fox slash Disney would own, do you think that they would partner and effectively continue to own that piece, or do you think that they would be inclined to sell that piece? To Comcast? You know, it's a, it's a great question, Andrew, and it's not entirely clear. And by the way, this, this bid from Comcast doesn't take off the table the idea that they might still try to do a topping offer for the Fox assets. You, if, oh, oh um, hold on, hold on. That, that's Warner. a huge, that's a, that's a development, meaning I think the assumption this morning was that because Comcast had pursued Sky, the potential for a bid for 21st Century Fox in total was now off the table. You don't think that's the case? No there's, no, there's nothing that says that that's entirely off the table. Comcast hasn't said it's off the table, and logically, this would be one way to pursue exactly that. And so, the, and, and look, that has been overhanging the shares for a while. The Comcast shares have entirely missed the market rebound of the past couple of weeks, largely because it was reported um, by your own network that they were still interested in that they were interested in a topping bid for Fox. This doesn't take that off the table. This this still leaves. The, the open question of now would they go after the rest of Fox, including the 39% of Sky that Fox owns, um, as, as the part two of, of this whole story. And that overhang is going to continue to be um, to, to, to overhang the shares for the foreseeable future until we hear about AT&T Time Warner.
Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.